Hey guys, it's John P with Geekbeat, and we are we have a special guest today. It's David Jumpa from Airbiquity, and we're going to talk about mobile trends in automotive integration. Today's episode of Geekbeat is brought to you by Carbonite. Hey David, thanks for joining me today. Thank you, John. I appreciate the opportunity to speak on uh, with you via Skype. Oh yeah, you're so you are hanging out in Las Vegas, hot there. Are, I've actually been here now for three days for CTIA, uh, and meeting with several of the mobile network operators and uh, seeing what this new ecosystem and what they're doing in automotive. Fantastic. So. I am a big car buff and I happen to also be a geek. So there is nothing that I love hearing more than these two worlds coming together. And we've been watching that for the last few years as these automotive manufacturers attempt to kind of satiate our desires for all of these new apps and things. And you guys are helping with that if I understand correctly. We are, you know, the mobile network operators traditionally have provided just the cellular service or the data services to the auto manufacturers. That has actually changed quite a bit with smartphone applications and services getting pretty much to 50, 60 percent of the market. Uh, the, you know, the safe use of these applications in the vehicle as well, and now as the drivers bring these phones into the car, we have developed some technology that allows the drivers to actually use their smartphone applications in a safe manner by being able to use the vehicle controls, speech recognition, and all of it being managed from the cloud. Uh, we've been working very closely with the network operators and bringing these solutions uh, uh, to market. Uh, we announced a, a, uh, a partnership with Sprint actually at the LA Auto Show, which is our first commercial deployment and bringing uh, Sprint using our middleware platform, which we call Corio 5.0 uh, to market. Uh, they're doing that with the uh, Chrysler program. Cool. Well, let's let's talk for a second about what types of things consumers might be looking to get out of their automotive experience. And then uh, after we understand a little bit of that, then I want to hear how you guys specifically plug in for those of us who are really hardcore geeks and make that work. Um, one of the things that I think about when I'm in my car, well, I think of a lot of different things that I would love to do, some of which I can't yet, but I guess one of the big things is music, for example. I'm a big, I'm a big I enjoy Pandora. So I know that a lot of auto manufacturers are starting to have like embedded Pandora apps, some of which are kind of standalone in the dash and some of which kind of integrate in with my cell phone somehow and they like mm -hmm. see my preferences and things. Is that mm -hmm. some of what you guys are working on? And what it other is. kinds of things have you seen people really wanting? You know, it is actually, you know, what's happening within the automotive market right now is you come into the vehicle, your smartphone, there's a big disconnect and actually just time to market of the consumer devices yeah. that, you know, hit the market every three to four months with some new feature sets. And the head units that are inside of your vehicle were actually decided, developed, and designed, frankly, three years, years ago. Exactly, three yeah. years before that. So now here you have a big disconnect on, on technology as it's coming into the market. And what the auto manufacturers have done is they, when they load the application or the, I would say, a thin client of that application onto the head unit, is so you can actually use that by using your vehicle controls, right? Versus having to look at your smartphone to drive that application. Uh, I think it, what we are doing as part of that, we are actually taking that to the next level. What we're doing is we're uh, adding a thin client into the vehicle, developing a smartphone app so it can communicate to the cloud. And that application itself is actually running off of your smartphone, not necessarily the in-vehicle head unit. And then from the cloud, we bring in the, all the HMI, uh, all the artwork for that app that can be customized to that specific head unit, to that specific vehicle, as well with whatever that trim level of that vehicle brings to be able to control that app. But the app itself runs on your smartphone. So would I then, I mean, are the apps co-branded? Like if I buy, you mentioned, uh, I think Chrysler earlier. So let's say that I buy a new, uh, like a Ram pickup truck. Um, would I download a RAM branded app and then that app is what's plugging into your back end service and doing the controls? Is that how that works? 
Yeah, so the way the way the way the system would work, it actually may be branded as an actual spe specific vehicle model or specific brand, or maybe just rebrand it, uh, General Motors, Chrysler, Ram, uh, or Dodge as the uh, uh, because the main brand the main uh, brand there is Dodge itself, yeah. and then under Dodge you would have the uh, the Ram truck brand itself. So so the branding aspect of it, I think that you know there's a lot of experimental. Uh, things going on there with the OEM to see if they're going to have a master brand or are they going to actually just stick with uh, the local brands that they uh, or segment the brands that they have in place. Okay. Hey guys, it's time for a Carbonite break. You know, we've got all this data and we're talking about how to get it into our cars and take it with us and all that, but it doesn't do us any good if it's gone. That's why you need Carbonite for all your backup. Whether you're at home, whether it's your office, it doesn't matter. Carbonite's gonna keep all your data safe in the cloud automatically. And I know I've told you guys before, they do it for 59 bucks a year. That is crazy because you can't even buy a hard drive that cheap. But there's something else that you don't, you probably don't know and I have forgotten to tell you about often, which is, they actually have an entire business offering that's 600 bucks a year for unlimited computers in your office, including Windows servers. So if you do the math on it, that is really, really cheap on a monthly basis to not only have protection at your home, but to have protection for your business. Just imagine if, you know, five of your computers at work got hit by lightning. Well, all their stuff is stored in the cloud safely, beautifully. Thank you, God. So head on over to Carbonite.com, use coupon code GEEKBEAT, and you get two free months with any package you purchase. Okay, guys, let's get back to David. So let me tell you what my perfect world vision would be. And you tell me how far away we are from me being able to get this. Okay. All right. So here's what I want. I want to be in my house. I want to get up in the morning. My smartphone wakes me up because I got my clock on there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go hop in the shower where I have a Sonos unit in my bathroom and I listen to some music. Now, I get out of that. I'm, I'm walking through the house. Maybe I'm listening to a little Pandora. I want to walk out, hop in my car continue playing my Pandora. I want to pull out of my garage and have the car automatically turn off the lights, shut my garage door, um, maybe reach into my Android uh, Google Now thing and, and make an announcement to me that I'm 10 minutes away from the office, throw the navigation up on the screen to get to the office, and uh, take me there. And then maybe in the middle, if I get a call or a text or tweet or something, it's going to announce it to me, talk to me about it and give me that. And, and I, don't, I just want it to kind of happen seamlessly and automatically. How far away are we from making so all that happen? We're actually taking a peek into 2017 to 2020 right now. Okay. And that's really the reason for Corio 5.0. Right. One of the main reasons we're working with the mobile operators, John, is because it's been a very, uh, the, what they call machine to machine, has been very siloed. So home automation, medical monitoring, and automotive have been very separate and distinct markets they focus on. In order for that vision or that product to come together, you need an actual middleware platform that's hosted in the cloud where your personal information and your personal service provider whether that's actually going to be your our smartphone service provider, your cable provider, or the car company, can actually have access so yeah. it can be controlled by your personal data. And, and key here is your GPS information can actually be monitored that they know you just left your house, you walked into your garage, you're now 10 minutes away from the office, right? Right. That thing there is, is GPS. And the only item that I know of today that we all carry in our pocket that has GPS is the smartphone. You're right. So I think the mobile operator is very key for that. And they all have very key, very focused initiatives on home automation. I mean, AT&T has made a, several announcements on purchases in that area, I believe, as well. Sprint has done the same. Vodafone's doing the same. So I think that your vision and the product that you are looking for as a consumer is less than five years away. So I guess what we need really is for at least, because if they're all kind of fighting for ownership of that, somebody has to step up and take a leadership role like Who's going to be the central point? Am I going to register all my personal data with GM or Chrysler and let my car company 
own that experience or am I going to let that happen with uh, AT&T or Time Warner or you know some uh, home s service provider I guess right mm -hmm. you know th those there's there's three major components that you just mentioned right so one is technology well technology it's there now it just has to be integrated uh, across m the entire ecosystem of multiple vendors the other aspect is who owns the customer. That's the big question, right? Yeah, and I think yeah. there's a big, I would, I would say a big, but I think there's a lot of partnerships that are coming together. But within those partnerships on Gen 1 or Gen 2, there's going to be a fight for who owns that customer, whether it's the auto manufacturer, the mobile operator, or your cable provider. Or it could be also your home security system uh, uh, service provider. I mean, if you look at what the way the evolution on who actually owns your phone service today, who would have thought your cable provider would have been providing 50% of the telecom service in people's homes today, right, through voice over IP. I think you're gonna, it's going to be very interesting to see how the bundling of these services happen and who actually controls it. Is it the vehicle that's going to win, like the, a General Motors going to provide that service, or is it a General Motors AT&T, or is it a Sprint slash Chrysler that actually brings your communication services to you? Well, as much as I want it, I'm, I mean, it sounds like we're kind of still in the Wild West with, with the capability. So I guess we're going to have to take the little bits that we can get as it comes along. So we're looking at things right now. Uh, what kind of things can you guys help, the, help them integrate into vehicles like right now, not future-oriented stuff? What can we get? So right now, we're actually doing smartphone integration. We're, you're, we're enabling and allowing applications that the OEMs want to be used within their head units, within their cars. Uh, we provide off-board policies, meaning that per application, per vehicle trim level, per state or country uh, in their regulatory environment, we offer all those policies to be downloaded onto the vehicle. So you can use a Facebook application, but versus actually looking at it, you maybe just hear uh, text-to-speech back that you have posting. You may be able to respond to that posting using speech recognition software. Uh, you, you may be able to actually uh, listen to Pandora and get some marketing information. You're going to walk out based on your location and start getting that voucher or that coupon onto your handset so you can go to the Starbucks or other related services. So in order for this to come together, there needs to be something in the middle that has all the business logic that allows the auto manufacturers to go from providing you a smartphone integration project that you can actually do that to providing you some savings for user-based insurance to actually providing you a safety and security program. There's a middleware platform in the cloud that needs to manage all this for them. And that's actually what we do today. We're commercial in that. And uh, the announcement of Corio 5.0 is that we've launched this and are commercially available in 50 countries and have localized to 34 languages. Wow, it's amazing. Okay, so I guess just to sum things up, a couple of last quick questions for you. Number one is, it sounds like you guys are piecing all these apps and and uh, rules and regulations together. Um, I suppose that the people who are building the apps need to integrate in with you so that it can be integrated on the back end. So that you you need you need these app providers to either tie into or provide you with an API, something like that? So we've developed an API, but we, so we know, what, we know what the APIs are, we know what the controls are in an Android phone, an iOS phone, Blackberry, and, and uh, Windows, right? So if you take those four, we actually work with the app, provi uh, app providers to open up their API, and we actually write a wrapper or interface into that with them. Okay. Then they republish the wrap. Uh, the key there is, you know, how do we get them to do that? And I think there lies why one of the reasons we're as well, another reason why we partner with the mobile network operators is that they have a pool of app providers they bring in. They are actually investing in doing uh, app developer conferences, right? Sprint does one in, in the Bay Area, AT&T does one at CES, Vodafone does one, Verizon does one. And through that process, we are getting more and more app providers. But one thing I'll, you know, I will point out is that it's not going to be all 500,000 apps that are going to be available for you to use in your vehicle. Yeah. And there's the name brand, main brand apps that everyone uses every day, social apps, the internet radio related apps, location based applications that you and I know. And there's some applications that really make sense to be in a car, right? Similar to uh, like OpenTable, it's a great yeah. application. Or Yelp or Foursquare or yeah, these kinds of things. Applications that. Uh, you know, that allow you or, or your within your social network to let them know where you are. Maybe it's not necessarily you actually listening, or maybe you're giving permission for people that you know 
to get, get information on where you are. Yeah. Right. You're actually in, in downtown Boston. You're passing the the latest pub, and one of your friends sees you passing by me. Let me send them a message that I'm actually here. That would um, be so awesome. Right. So those are the, those things are all coming together. Okay. So the final piece, just so that uh, that we understand how it works on the back end, I'm curious because if you're going to have all these. You're, you're going to be the center of everything coming in, into and out of you. You guys are kind of a conduit. How are you handling that from an infrastructure standpoint? Do you divide up your infrastructure across multiple countries and data centers? And how expansive is that infrastructure at this point? Well, it has definitely been a multi-million dollar investment on our behalf. There's no doubt. We actually launched our, our, eight, our, our Corio platform, our initial Corio platform in 2007. Fort Sync, the services they offer is a hosted service. We provide the back end uh, gateway for that. We also do that for the Nissan Leaf. That was the expansion of us taking that into Europe and other countries. Uh, and then now we also announced a partnership with China Unicom. Uh, as you may or may not know, in China, a lot of these services have to be within in market. So you have to host in market with your uh, data center and services uh, to provide that. Wow. So it has definitely been a multi-million dollar investment and we're working very closely to continue to expand past the 50 countries. Okay, well that's a lot of good information. Thanks thanks a lot, David. We really appreciate you Thank sharing you. that with us, explaining how the process works. If you guys want even more information, head on over to airbiquity.com and learn all about it. Stay tuned right here for more on GeekBeat TV. Give us a thumbs up on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash GeekBeat TV, and I'll see you later.